Welcome to Health Coach for Women. Intentional living for more happiness and fulfillment in your everyday life with your host, Marsha Rupchand Walker. Join Marsha as she shares her own personal wellness journey, as well as stories from our guests that will enlighten and inspire you to move towards better health and happiness. Now, here's your host, Marsha Rupchand Walker. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Health Coach for Women. Today, I'd like to talk to you about ages. And what do I mean by ages? Okay, when I'm referring to ages, I'm referring to advanced glycation end products. What exactly is that? And to be quite honest with you, this is also new to me as well. You know, as I continue on my health journey, I'm learning so much more, and it's really amazing on what you can learn. And when you will learn and understand how the body works and how food uh, plays a major role in our health, um, that it just becomes this life mission, right? And so that's what it's done for me. So um, advanced glycation end products, right? So these are proteins that becomes glycated, right? And so when I say glycated, uh, it's something that occurs when we uh, cook our food at high temperatures, and and what what it, what it does it it it's what gives us the food that dark brown color that we notice when we fry our foods, hamburgers, bacon, whatever, right? And so that's what that's what that's what's happening. Uh, the the food becomes glycated, and as an exposure uh, to sugars, right? And so what happens is sugar, proteins, as well as fats create these ages, right? It creates it, which accounts for chronic diseases, as well as inflammation, uh, the aging process, and the complications with diabetes. diabetes. And they've also found it in my research, um, looking at different uh, articles and journals and from doctors speaking who's, who's been studying this that is also linked and related to uh, a cancer patients uh, as well as Alzheimer's disease, okay? And so now age, age does occur naturally within the body because most cells utilize glucose uh, in the body as well as amino acids and fats. And what it's what's it's used for energy, right? And so it it needs that. And through this chemical pro- process, uh, within the body, uh, the end product, the byproduct of that uh, is ages, right? It's it's what forms naturally in the body. So age, uh, age, uh, adverse glycation end products, they they are reversible when ages are kept at a minimal level and when they're kept at bay, right? And so what happens is if we look at our diet, now what, what in my research, what they did say uh, was that glucose is a key player when it comes to ages, right? And so our diet is very important. And so we need to make uh, our diet uh, very, we have to follow a diet. We have to create a diet um, that's, we have to improve our diet, right? So we have to find a way to improve our diet, Um by keeping these things at bay. Now, what happens is it, it accumulates over a lifetime, right? And I've also found this out too over, over time. It accumulates in the body and it stays. And what happens if in our diet, if we produce an overproduction of it, which comes from um, in, our, in our bodies, right? From, uh, from eating those foods, uh, rich and fried foods, right? Refined sugars, and things like that. What happens? It, it it's an overproduction, and it becomes irreversible. And this is how we get the chronic disease, as well as inflammation, and what have you. So, what are some of the things that we can do to kind of manage our production of AGA, AGEs in the body? Um, we can start by, like I said, by um, changing our diet, right? And so I know that you don't want to, you know, you, you don't want to give up fried foods and things like that. 
and I totally get it, right? And so, but let's modify that. Let's uh, let's lower our consumption. So instead of having fried foods, um, I don't know how often you may have fried foods, but instead of having it, you know, several times a week, let's cut it down to maybe once out of the week, right? Let's let's start by doing that. But we have to we have to again take control of our health, and we can't leave it to others to be responsible for our own health and well being, right? And so we have to make our diet, uh, taking control of our diet and our health a priority. And one of the ways of doing that, again, is managing that by avoiding fried foods. You want to try steaming your vegetables, right? Steaming or boiling your food, right? And so it, it, it may not be for everyone, right, to do that with some things, um, but we can find ways. Now, what was surprising to me was even dry heat. So even baking things in an oven produces these AGEs, which was something like, wait a minute. It was so surprising for me because I'm like, you know, I prefer to bake my food rather than fry it. So that was information found to me that I found, you know, um, quite interesting. So it's the high heat that produces these AGEs. It's that high heat in, um, that is, that's created, that causes that uh, protein, that combination of them producing, coming together and div- coming up with this end product. This is what naturally happens in the body. And when we cook in our food, there's a chemical process going on as, as the food is being prepared through high heat. So these proteins and and lipids and things and all they're combining together, making this compound and the end product of that, the byproduct of that is the AGEs. So what else can we do, right? Eat more whole foods, eat more fruits and vegetables, right? Consume more complex carbs, right? I talked about complex carbs before, you know, uh, oats, you know, not um, the quick instant oats that you buy, you know, just your regular oats that you would cook if you're going to have like oatmeal or something like that. Um, Brown rice, right? Brown rice over white rice, right? Sweet potatoes, whole wheat bread, right? Quinoa, kidney beans, right? I love kidney beans. Um, Whole wheat pasta, pumpkin, um, multigrain cereals, green peas, couscous, you know, these are some of complex carbs and you can, I'm I'm sure there's a whole lot more you can Google those, but I'm just giving you a list of some of the complex carbs you may want to include um, in your diet if you're not already doing so. And and also keeping a low glycemic index, index, right? Having a, a low glycemic index when you're eating your food and to keeping, regulating your blood sugar, Remember, I talked about that before on, on, on the another episode where we talked about regulating our blood sugar. And so some low glycemic index foods, uh, there's a ranking scale um, or the ranking scale. It can go from zero to 55, which these foods in that low glycemic index would be fo- foods such as almonds, chickpeas, cherries, raw carrots, uh, coconut, cucumber, which is great great to put in your salad, eggs, uh, hummus, which comes from chickpeas, lentils, mango, uh, olives, uh, fresh pineapple, plums, prunes, basmati rice, spinach, strawberries, sunflower seeds, tomatoes, and yams. And those are in the low uh, glycemic, in ranked a, a between, um, excuse me, between, let's get my words together, <laughs> low glycemic index foods, ranked from zero to 55. And so we have the medium glycemic index foods, which range from 56 to 69. And these foods include cooked beets, whole grain bread, corn, honey, honeydew, melons, oatmeal, papaya. Now, what you should know, now I talked to you before, mentioned before about the main production in agriculture, right? Where they use genetically modified foods are corn and sugar. Also papaya. Also papaya is also, uh, if you're taking supplements on papaya, papaya is very good for you, but you definitely want to, if you're going to have fresh vegetables, if with fresh papaya, you definitely want organic, 
okay? Because papaya supplements, uh, if it doesn't say non-GMO, more than likely it's been genetically modified as well. So you just have to take the time to read the food labels. Um, and I know there's things that you... Uh, things that you may not even understand, right? You can't even pronounce it. And so that should tell you something in itself, right? There's, I mean, there's many food products with so many different names for sugars uh, and there's, there's dyes, you know, food coloring. You know, I talked about all of that before. So again, keep, keeping a low glycemic uh, index um, as well as uh, complex carbs, is one of the ways that we could try to manage that. In addition to healthy habits of walking, right, doing our exercise, you know, um, doing some of the some of the things that we need to do for ourselves, right? And let's pay attention to our bodies, right? Pay attention. Our bodies know when there is something wrong. So if you notice, maybe you know there is something going on with your stomach and and and. You know, if something is a little off, you find that you're more gassy than usual, or you notice that you have more pain, or you or you're going through some type of something going on in your GI tract, and you and you have maybe irritable bowel syndrome. You know, all of these things uh, can link back to uh, what we're eating, right? The foods that we're eating. And another good thing that you can do, I mentioned the slow heat cooking, maybe getting a slow pressure cooker, one of those pressure cookers. Um, you may want to consider fasting, right? And so what fasting does, as I mentioned before, fasting helps to detoxify the body, right? Or you can try eating one meal a day. There's different things for it. There's a different uh, regimen for everyone, right? So not knowing you personally, I couldn't say, you know, this is what you should do. This is what you should try. But you know your body. You know uh, what, what you can stand. And it, with anything, you always definitely want to always consult with your physician, right? You want to consult with your physician and just be open and honest and, and let them know what you're doing. Hey, I'm looking to, you know, really work on improving my health and and so uh, there's things that I want to modify in my diet. You know, let let your your a physician know on um, what you're doing, right? And so communicate. You know, things that you because if you're taking medications, you definitely want to consult with your physician, right? So when anything you do, you, you consult with your doctor, right? Just want to put that out there, that disclaimer. So you 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 make these slight changes, right? And you get your, you, you do your exercise, you walk. I talked about meditation and prayer, all of these things and fasting. There's different, there's different solutions for each individual. All right. So maybe someone may not be able to fast. Maybe they may be able to do a, a short fast. There's different types of fasting that people do. Right. And so you can have something where you're eating one meal a day. And that's it for the entire day, right? And you, or you can do the water fast. I haven't done the water fast, so I couldn't say. Then then there's the boiled egg diet. There's so many different things. You've heard of the keto, uh, the Mediterranean diet, and there's different things. You just have to know what works best for you. Now, if you're going through the suffering from any food allergies, you know, I talked about the elimination diet where you just eliminate certain foods, right? We're starting out with, of course, the refined sugars and, and all the things like that and uh, coffee and, you know, getting rid of all it because we need to see what, when are these, uh, when are the, the body giving us, the, are, are letting us know when we are experiencing these symptoms, right? And so if, if we eliminate those foods and we just go on the whole foods, and we do the whole food diet and having more fruit juices and smoothies, right? And now's the perfect time as the weather is starting to improve. You know, you should be inspired more to, you know, take the time out and, and make your smoothies, right? And I say you can buy them and make make them make your smoothies yourself rather than um, buying them from the store because again, they're still loaded with a ton of sugar. So these are some things that you can do. 
Um, now, the other thing I wanted to mention was, you know, it's, it's, it's it's a tough thing to want to change to, to change your diet, right? It, it's it's tough to say, oh my goodness, you know, it's pretty much everything that I love. It's pretty much everything that I enjoy eating. Well, you know, you have to look at it as you can either still go ahead and do the things you're doing, and then look at how it's going to affect you in the long run, or you could just make slight modifications. No one is saying that you have to just totally get rid of these foods today, right now. You know, just start by making a slow, slow change, st- slow modifications. And if you, if, if you're smoking, that's another thing you may want to consider stop smoking, you know, and, and alcohol, it's, it has a ton of sugar in it. So, you know, reducing your consumption of alcohol, you know, all of these things, you know, sugar is in, 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 many of the foods that we eat and it's just, and our body do need sugar, right? And so our body uses glucose. Our body do use, it's what we use to have energy. It's what's give us energy. But too much of anything isn't good, right? Too much of anything isn't good. And so we already know that it's the foods that is the major cause for of chronic illnesses and disease. We know that. And so how we prepare our food matters. How we prepare our food matters. So instead of having maybe the fried fish, you know, and boy, and I have to say this with myself, you know, I enjoy baking salmon. So how else would I, we have to find, there has to be some way. So I guess if you can find a way to, because again, this is new for me as well, you know, learning about these AGEs and, um, and we can't prevent every single thing, right? And we all know as long as we are alive, we will age. It's part of the, it's part of life. As long as we're alive and breathing, we will age. And as we age, our bodies produce less hormones, right? As we age. And it's just a natural occurring thing that happens. But while we are here and still alive, let's make the best of it and and doing more and better for ourselves to improve our health, right? And so let's just start doing those things. Now, what I was saying was about salmon. I like to bake my salmon, right? And so will I stop baking salmon if I have it uh, once a week? Probably not because, or um, even if I prepare it on a stove, maybe I will stew my salmon, right? Maybe I will go ahead and stew on my salmon on a low flame, right? A low flame because I, I was always thought that baking was better. So that's something new for me as well. So we can do things like that. Maybe slow, slow cooking off food to a low heat, um, and again, I mentioned about the slow cooker. Let again include as much fruits and vegetables in your diet as possible. Include as many the greens, the spinach, the kale, uh, baby spinach. You know, I love having baby spinach in my salad. Um, kale, you know, the spring mix salad. You know, iceberg lettuce has no nutritional value. So when you purchase the salads that you get from McDonald's, it has no nutritional value. Right. And so you want to have something like the romaine lettuce, you know, some um, healthier, healthier choices, healthier foods. Look for organic, you know, look for organically uh, produced food. Now, even with that. Right. And so that would be another topic. I I can go into telling you about uh, the different labels on organic if it's 100 percent organic. And just to tell you this, if it doesn't say 100% organic, it's probably not. It has, it probably has more organic materials than not. Um, But if it doesn't say 100% organic, uh, then it probably isn't. Labels, foods that says non-GMO or GMO verified, those are more of the choices that I tend to go with when I'm when I'm doing my shopping, when I'm gro- doing my grocery shopping. So let's just be more mindful 
of these things. Let's be more mindful in how we select food, how we choose food, how we prepare food, how we even look at food, right? And and some people say, man, I love food. And I will be the first one to tell you, that is me. I love food. But again, we have to look at food as it's a source of us uh, giving us the energy, which we need. It's also pleasurable when it tastes good. The flavor is good, right? But it has to be where we are making these mindful choices and choosing, deciding to refrain from certain foods that we know uh, is not good for us, right? We have to refrain from those uh, foods, you know, and even if even if you're doing it several days a week, I say progress is better than no progress, right? Progress is better than no progress. Start somewhere. It, it's, it could be difficult. It could be challenging. And, and I know that, but the only way to do better is to be better. And that's by taking action and doing what you need to do for your health. You know, and I guess for me, it's so, um, you know, working in the healthcare field and, and, and being around the geriatric, geriatric uh, p- patients, you know, uh, in the nursing home, in the facilities, um, just seeing the decline, right? And it's a reminder and it's it's pretty terrible. And, it's, and sometimes I have to, you know, I feel so bad. I don't know what else to say. I try my best to like, you know, lift their spirits or give them a nice laugh or even tell them something about myself, right? And um, to let them know, you know, hey, you're not alone, right? And and you matter. And so when you, and, and, and they talk about, uh, you know, oh, it's no fun getting old, you know, and being old is just, you know, and sometimes, and sometimes they say they're just ready to go. They're just ready to check out. And it's pretty sad. You know, it's pretty sad where you're in a place maybe where you don't really particularly care to be uh, and um, and you're in this state of where you're not you're no longer able to do for yourself. Right. You're no longer able to do for yourself. You don't know when you have an a BM, right, a bowel movement. You don't know when you're incontinent and you uh, void on yourself. You don't know these things. Right. And 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 not only that when you're not with it mentally, right? When you you don't even know where you are, you're uh, confused. And this is the decline of the brain. And it's really sad. So, you know, and I look at that and say, you know what? You know, if I live that long, one day, you know, this will be me. So I'm doing everything in my power now to do the best I can um, to have better health to have longer life of uh, brain health, right? And be able to still move around. And you have some people who are 100 years old and more, and they're still able to walk and move around and they're still mentally with it. So I always ask them, you know, what's your secret, you know? And they don't particularly have one. They probably said, you know, I, I was busy. I, 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 walk, I walked around a lot or, or even I, I did a volunteer work, you know, something like that. Um, and just some, and again, everyone's metabolism is different. And so we just have to do the best we can with what we know. And that's why for me, I'm giving this information, providing you this information that you would take heed and make modifications, um, make slow changes and, 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 and live more with that intention of being healthier, Right. And happier, of course, but being healthier and having more energy, right? And and combating that depression, um, uh, staying away from those foods that deplete our energy, right? And zaps and takes us away, for, uh, takes our energy away. Uh, we need to be mindful of those things. So it's the foods that we eat, you know, um, let's be more mindful of that and do the best we can Again, perfection is an illusion, right? So let's let's strive for being better, not perfect. Thank you so much. That's all I have for you on today's episode. Thank you so much for listening in. Until next time, bye for now. 
Thank you so much for listening to Health Coach for Women with your host, Marsha Rupchand Walker. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to rate, subscribe, and review on your preferred podcast listening platform. We really appreciate that effort. Until next time.